Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday brought to you by EMFCarAudio.com. This week, we're going to look at amplifier settings. This was a suggestion by one of our Patreon contributors. There's a link below if you would also like to be a Patreon contributor. They said we should do a video on amplifier settings. So we're going to do that. We're going to look at a monoblock amplifier and a four channel amplifier. So we'll look at all the settings involved in both of these, uh, how they should be used, how they should be adjusted. And we're going to first start with the SAX 125.4 full range 125 by 4 at 4 ohm amplifier available on our website. Starting with everything that we have on the side, we have our inputs for channel 1, 2, 3, and 4. We also have outputs, output 1 and output 2. These outputs are completely passive, meaning the signal input from here goes out here. And on this amp, I believe they're summed uh, between these channels. So there's no amplification, anything like that. It's just a pass through from here to here. So in this instance, uh, you could go out from here to a sub amplifier or even another uh, set of inputs uh, on a four channel. I typically don't use these. I would use something like the cock box that we have available on our website for uh, distribution there. But that is something that you can use. We have gain, subsonic, crossover frequency, crossover type, and the actual frequency settings. And these are separate for channels one and two uh, being the same and three and four being the same. So on three and four, gain, uh, as you see on the bottom here. Uh, this range uh, for front and rear, or one, two, three, and four, is on a range of six volts and 0 0.2 volts. So you might think that the numbers uh, are going to be linear, but the lowest gain setting is actually six volts. That's because the output on the head unit would have to be putting out six volts for this to be an accurate gain setting. 0.2 volts would be the lowest voltage. Uh, so at a 0.2 voltage on your head unit, you can still get maximum power out of this amplifier. That's a correct setting at 0.2 volts. So just because the gain is at uh, all the way down or all the way up doesn't mean that you're not getting full power or if you had the gain set higher, it would make more power. It could just be making distortion. That's when you get into setting the amplifier uh, gain correctly. That's a separate video in itself. So if you don't have an oscilloscope, uh, you don't have any real good way of getting this set, you can kind of ballpark it. If you have a digital multimeter, you can go to volume playing a tone on your head unit, get the output voltage, and let's say you go to volume 30 of 35, like on an Alpine. You might get 1.8 volts. So what you can do is take 6 volts minus 0.2 volts, which would be 5.8 volts, and then you can divide uh, that range to find out where you need to be. So if you're at 2 volts, for example, it would be almost a third of the way around back to the high side to be approximately a correct setting you would want to use the voltage from the maximum amount, not just an obscure uh, volume that you'll never go to. You don't want to set your gain for like volume 10 if you're going to go to volume 30, for example. On the crossover, we have 50 hertz to 500 hertz if the switch is on X1, or 500 hertz to 5000 hertz if the crossover is on X10. So this is a multiplier switch, and not all amplifiers have this. Uh, this is a very advanced crossover system. Your high-end amplifiers uh, that are intended to use this as an active setup with components where you might have channels one and two on the mids at X1 and the tweeters uh, on X10 to where you wouldn't have to have any passive crossovers is when you use an amplifier like this. You're generally, um, your more basic amps or your low-end amplifiers aren't going to have that times 10 or times one you should have to look at the frequency range uh, for the settings on that. And of course, you have the high pass, low pass, and full switch. 
Full means these settings are not going to be used at all. It's just a straight pass through signal from here to the output. Low pass is kind of like what it sounds. From the frequency that you set it, it will pass everything below that. So if we set this to 80 hertz and then go to low pass, 80 hertz and down will pass through at the same level of output. It is not a brick wall of response. These have 12 dB per octave crossovers. Some amplifiers you can adjust uh, that slope. Uh, these are set, but that means for uh, every octave, it's going to fall off 12 dB. So there's going to be a gradual curve. So this being the low side and this being the high side of response, it's going to do something like this instead of this. What that actually means is one octave is going to be double or half of a given frequency. So for the example of 80 hertz, between 80 hertz and 160 hertz, there will be 12 dB difference of response rolling off. If it were, say, 100 hertz, it would be 100 hertz and 200 hertz. 200 hertz would have that same 12 dB roll off because that's what this amp is. On the high pass, it's the same thing but opposite. Everything above that frequency will get passed through. Same thing with the 12 dB per octave. Below that, you go one octave below, that's how much you'll have cut over that range. And you can have some overlap with crossovers. What you don't want is a gap. So you might set this to 80 hertz high pass and 80 hertz low pass uh, between your amplifiers. And you're going to have a, possibly a little bit of a bump uh, where those cross over. So you might have to go a little bit above that. It kind of depends on how the whole installation is. And then we have subsonic. In some amplifiers, this is called infrasonic, which is actually a better naming for this. But the subsonic is basically a high pass filter for low frequencies. So in this we have 10 hertz to 500 hertz. In this case, uh, if we set it all the way to 500 hertz, 500 hertz is going to get cut below that. Uh, if we went to say 20 hertz or 30 hertz, which is much more common uh, if you had um, an enclosure that be could become unwieldy at those frequencies, you would set the subsonic so you're filtering the bottom end of that so you can't cause mechanical damage to the sub by playing a frequency that it's not really able to mechanically play in that enclosure. Uh, in the case of mids, uh, this is not very commonly used, but it can be where you would use the subsonic in conjunction with a low pass would be for a mid. Uh, in an active setup in this, so you would actually get a bandpass effect. So you can set to where the subsonic would filter below a certain point, uh, kind of like you would use a high pass four. However, you would set the low pass at a much higher frequency, and that would basically squeeze the bandwidth uh, for the mid, so it's safe to play to where you're not getting overlap like you would from the sub, uh, so it's safe there, but it's also not gonna have any overlap with the tweeter or causing any damage with there. Basically kind of like you would use a passive filter uh, for this uh, if you want to cut off the top end of the mid-range or uh, for whatever reason that might be. Maybe it naturally has a roll-off that's pretty high that might kind of be intrusive on the tweeter if it has a lower roll-off. So we'd use the bandpass effect using the subsonic uh, and the low pass uh, for that application. We also have the power light and protect light uh, the power is just simply indicating that the power is on and the protect could be triggered by several different things. It could be low voltage, high voltage, a dead short on the speaker, a dead short on the RCA, uh, impedance too low uh, if you have it wired below what it can handle. So all of those things can trigger protect. Um, that's not a desirable thing. It can also indicate if the amplifier is just bad, uh, if it has failed you'll often get a protect light. Now, we'll go ahead and look at the sub amplifier. And now we're looking at the Sundown Audio SAE 1000D. Now this amplifier is a little bit different than the SCV line uh, or many other amplifiers. In this particular case, we have low level inputs, that's your RCAs from the head unit, but we also have high level inputs. So for that, we have 
this little plug with wires on it that would also be known as speaker level inputs. So you could actually run from say the rear speakers um, in your rear deck or something like that. If you do have a factory head unit, then you can just run speaker level directly in so you don't have to have uh, an adapter uh, to get RCAs. So that'll plug in right there. Just like the other amplifier, we have the gain adjustment marked as level, minimum, maximum. Uh, this is also going to be the same kind of thing where you have to look at what the minimum and maximum is. If you go over that, you can damage the preamp, uh, but the gain setting, uh, that's the same as the other amplifier. Uh, low pass, in this case, we have 30 hertz to 250 hertz. The same way that you can uh, adjust it how we did it before, you can kind of ballpark the difference. So there's 220 hertz of range in this knob. You can figure out what frequency uh, you would like uh, to where you want to set it, just kind of as a, a ballpark if you're not going for very precise. And when you figure that out, you can figure out roughly what position this should be in. So let's say, say for example, you wanted to set it at 110 hertz. That would be smack in the middle of this 220 hertz range. Uh, if you want to go uh, different from that, you can figure out what percentage of that, turn that rotation, that'll give you a pretty good ballpark. We have a phase adjustment, zero to 180 degrees. So what that means is, if you had something 180 degrees out of phase, that's like swapping the positive and the negative on the sub. So let's say you wanted to change the phase of that. You could do that from the amp without removing the sub if you just change that zero to 180. Anywhere in between, uh, there's a lot more advanced stuff that has to do with phasing um, that is electrical phasing. You may be able to hear a difference uh, adjusting that. It's very, very precise. Most people won't use this setting. Uh, most people won't hear a difference, but if you go into sound quality, you can tell the difference uh, with that if you're doing RTA. Some SPL tweaking, uh, you can make a difference with that, but most times it doesn't. The bass boost, we have zero to 12 dB. Uh, and a point to note on this, almost every amplifier, if it has just a set bass boost number, is going to be 45 Hertz. Uh, there are some that you can adjust the frequency for that. This is not one of those amplifiers, but uh, on this amp, uh, I well, really in any scenario, I recommend not using bass boost. If you do, you definitely shouldn't be using it 12 dB worth. Uh, there are instances where you might have a sag in response, and in that case, you would want to boost it, you know, maybe up to 3 dB, but over that, I really feel is not necessary. Uh, it's just kind of one of those things that's never changed. It's always been really dramatic like that for all those amplifiers. Subsonic, 10 hertz to 50 hertz on this example. Same thing as we explained before. It's basically a high pass for the subwoofer. So if you set it to 50 hertz, at 50 hertz, that response is gonna start rolling off. Uh, that's pretty high. Uh, you'd only use that if you had like an SPL box that you wanna play music on, but you wanna make sure everything's safe at a high volume. So you'd set the subsonic uh, high like that, but usually you're gonna be closer to 20 hertz or maybe even 30 hertz, depending where you're tuned, uh, how big your enclosure is, uh, how large the port is and how fast the response falls off. And the last thing that we have on here is for strapping. We have one input in and a master slave switch. Now something to note, there are a lot of amplifiers that have the master slave switch if they are strappable. You have to have it on master if it's the only amplifier being used. If you flip this to slave, you'll get no output. So if you go and install an amp and you have no output right off the gate, make sure that switch is set to master. Now what is happening with this, when you have two of these strapped, which if I had a second one I could demonstrate, but what's happening here is you end up with one amp that's basically doing one half of the wave, and the other amp is doing the other half of the wave. It's splitting that, you're combining your voltage rails, so you can't run uh, as low impedance. Uh, so this is a one ohm amplifier. When you strap it, it should be used at two ohms instead of one but you'd have this input and then another one on the other amp. You would connect those with a single RCA. One is set to master, one is set to slave, and uh, you'd want to consult your owner's manual if that's the same way for your amps. Some amps are a little bit different, 
but that, that's how these are. But when you do strap an amp like that, you can use the settings on one amplifier. So have your signal in, strapped to the other, and these are the settings that you'd be going off of. You don't have to adjust the other amplifier at all. We also have a remote input that was also found on the other amplifier, uh, but this one is where you'd most commonly use it on a sub amp, and that is one of these. So we have a minimum and maximum adjustment on this, and this is a bass knob, as it's very commonly referred to. And what that does on this amplifier is adjust the gain setting. So you have the, the where the gain is set on the amp itself, this will only turn it down. It will never go higher than the maximum you have it set here. You can use that instead of a bass volume control on your head unit, or maybe you don't have that adjustment because you're using a factory head unit. Very quick access to turn that up and down. There are some amplifiers that that is actually a bass boost. So kind of where we had over here, it'll only boost say 45 hertz or 50 hertz or whatever it is that it's set to. It will turn the bass boost up and down, not a remote gain control. So that is something to look at with amplifiers. Uh, if you do plan on using that, it's worth asking the question, is it a gain knob or is it a bass boost knob? And there you have it. All of the adjustments and how they work on a subwoofer amplifier and a mid amplifier. You could also use this to bridge two channels to put it on a sub. If you didn't need a whole lot of sub, say 300, 400 watts. And that's also where you'd use the bass knob on a four channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave comments below, let us know what you think about this video. If you have any suggestions for future videos, if you have any questions on any of these amp settings, leave those below and we'll answer them as quickly as we can. Make sure you uh, visit the links below. Become a Patreon subscriber. The more that we can put into these videos, the better the videos will get. Make sure you support the channel also by shopping at emfcaraudio.com for the full line of Sundown Audio, EMF Audio, Excess Power, SBC, and Audio Control products. And I'll see you again on another Tech Stuff Tuesday.